while watching some Sunday night football last night, as I am prone to do, a trailer for a little movie we've known for a while was coming actually hit online. It is called Triple Frontier. Now, this movie, if you don't know much about it, the cast in this thing is insane. You've, of course, got Ben Affleck is leading it. You got Sons of Anarchy, Charlie Hunnam. You got Pedro Pascal from Narcos and from Kingsman 2. And, and the he's Mandalorian. Gonna be in the Mandalorian, and he's going to be in the new Wonder Woman movie. I love Pedro Pascal. He's amazing. You've got uh, Oscar Isaac from Star Wars. You got uh, Garrett Hedlund, I think is the way you pronounce it. Is, wasn't he the kid in the tra in um, Tron? Yes, Tron he Legacy. He was the kid in the new Tron Legacy. Yeah. So if you don't know much about this particular movie, in a lot of movies, there's always... A lot of times you see the villains, they're ex-military guys who got tired of the system, treating them bad, and they're used to the bad guys. Well, those are our main protagonists in this movie. These guys, that's what they are. They're military dudes who are sick of the fact that they now have nothing to show for it, for spending their life in service, and they want to make a score of their own. And I didn't know what to think about the movie, to be honest. Obviously a great cast, Robert. But you had a chance to see this trailer last night. What did you think about it? Well, it's directed by uh, J.C. Chan Chander who directed yep. A Most Violent Year that also stars Oscar Isaac, which I never thought I would care about a movie about the garbage strike in New York City. <laughs> but uh, it was a great, <clears throat> fantastic film. This movie looks unbelievable to me. I mean, give me a movie where dudes are trying to knock off. I guess they're robbing a drug lord. I mean, it looks great. It, I, I love movies like um, uh, Clear and Present Danger. Oh, yeah. You know, which is the Jack Ryan movie where they go after the drug cartels. This movie looks I can't wait. And it's a Netflix film. It's, yes. It's on Netflix, but it's going to have a, a limited theatrical release. I yeah. can't wait. It was one, It's can't one wait. of those films that, unfortunately, was originally slated to be a theatrical film. Right. And then later, but it, it wasn't like a Mowgli thing where after the film was practically done, then they dumped it on Netflix. It was very, very, very early on they decided to right. make it a Netflix thing. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I mean, but the star power in this oh. for a Netflix film. We, we're getting used to seeing Netflix films that have like a Chris Pine in it or a Emma Stone in it or something like that. But to have a cap, Pedro Pascal, Ben Affleck, Charlie Hunnam, Oscar Isaac. Unbelievable. This seems like something you'd want to put out theatrically. And and you'd think this is a movie that could make money. So I, I'm a little bit wondering why this is ending up on Netflix. Well, you know, this to me, it's the kind of movie that studios used to make all the time. Sort of a mid-range, um, a mid-level action adventure, uh, political thriller kind of a movie. I mean, this is John McTiernan's wheelhouse, um, whether he was doing like Basic or when William Friedkin did The Hunted with uh, Benicio Del Toro. They just don't make movies like this at the studio level anymore, so they don't want to market these movies. And I think Netflix is the perfect place to take this. I mean, you know, I watched that uh, the Kurt Russell Christmas movie on Netflix. Did you? Ever that, watch? I never did get around. It's, what was it's the Christmas just, Chronicles? The Christmas right? Chronicles. Yes, I loved it. I, I mean, it was it was Kurt Russell being like the cool Santa, and and Netflix. I don't know where in the process it got picked up, but it was as good as Elf was. That those are some bold words. I mean, I I loved it, and Kurt Russell has a music number in it. In prison, Santa in prison does a music number. That's all I'm saying. And I think Netflix is really starting to up the game. And we're going to see all of these mid-level movies. Um, they now have a place. I mean, we're going to get... I want more of these action-adventure type films. And and it's it's uh, it's great that uh, we have them. Um, I, I will say this, though. Before we start jumping on the thing about Netflix upping their game, I just watched <laughs> Mowgli. That was not any good. You didn't like it? Uh, no, I didn't. And I love, love... Um, uh, oh, why did I just freeze on uh, Andy Serkis's name? Andy Serkis. I love Andy Serkis. And I was looking forward to Mowgli and more, a more true thing. But I, sure enough, I sat down and watched it. I'm like, oh, that, that's why Warner Brothers pulled oh. it from a theatrical release and dumped it on a Much like that, that Paramount did with that the uh, Cloverfield, the Cloverfield Paradox. Por Paradox movie. It's like, oh, like you're really? They're putting it on Netflix? And then you watch the movie, like, oh, that's why. Right. But now we've got Roma coming. Right. Which is getting a lot of best picture buzz. We've got this Triple Frontier that looks really good. We got Irishman coming that has a lot of people Can't excited. Wait. It's going to be really interesting to see which direction this whole thing goes. Well, I think at first, you know, like everybody, they have to sort. It's like when HBO and and Showtime started to make their own movies. Right, right, right. They weren't good. 